Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2 with the most Terran player out there. In the blue, it's Micro Jackson. It's Bia. But up against the Protoss player we don't deserve. But the one we need right now. The Smiling Assassin. It's Hero. A best of three TVP on the new patch. New changes. New exciting things for especially this matchup, Terran versus Protoss. And of all the players out there to make use of them, I think Hero is at the top of the list. So hopefully at the top of your list is liking and subscribing for more good games for the fans. And Jimmy, what? 1,284 1, likes on this video, on this cast, on this series. And I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do that anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. If you haven't yet seen the video, on the new patch notes, the short version. The Cyclone is back to being a little less DPS, a little tankier, lock on cooldown. We don't mind nerf. A bit more visibility, a bit less radius. Advanced Ballistics Liberators have less range. Still plenty of range, but one less range. But uh, the Armory is half off, 50 gas less. And infantry, uh, weapons, and up weapon and armor upgrades are cheaper at plus two and plus three 25 and then 50 resources less so generally for terran um the specific units like liberators mines and to an extent cyclones a little weaker but everything else that uses upgrades potentially stronger whereas protoss the sentry no longer is light nor heavy just exactly what it means to be um does also bonus damage to shields but that's not really relevant here the pylon has one more sight range, so spylons, and observers build a little bit faster. So, while they're not major changes overall, in fact, probably the largest changes, um, well, one big change is building an oracle at all. Uh, I don't know how the cyclone or widowmine changes affect the oracle interaction. Widowmine still one-shot oracles. Oracles can still chase down clones on their own and kill them, but we haven't seen too much of these oracles uh throughout the course of the last patch up till now but with a new patch new maps comes new things which are you know the old things but slightly adjusted and in this case it's going to be a bunch of charge lots behind hero going oracle charge lot well one oracle into charge lots does he even have he has one phoenix which is just for boxing out any early aggression beyond He's building up the bio. He has three CCs with Hero. And one of the benefits and one of the reasons you see Stargate so often, especially in Protoss versus Zerk, is you get pretty much all the info. They can't really keep you out of their base. Um, and now this is an interesting... Put him, put him, put him down! Thank you. The Oracle? Well, today we learned. Well, at least I learned for sure. The Hellion is slightly faster than the Oracle. Good to know. But jot that down somewhere. But this is a massive charge lot timing behind. Beyond, uh, with 3cc, his barracks are significantly later. He's not really going to have any opportunity to move out until he has at least stim and ideally metavax. And Hero, I'm sure, going to be keeping tabs on him with that oracle. Just charge lot Archon. Ooh. Cyclone still very capable, especially when mixed in there. The revelation on everything. And Hero is only now rebuilding probes after adding on all these additional gateways. Though a conspicuous pylon powering them all. Bion is only going with a single engineering bay for now. Uh, we'll see if Bion actually starts building armories to get 2-2 in this matchup. Now that they're 50 gas off. And the plus two upgrades are uh, sig with both the armory and plus two being uh, 25 cheaper. It's a grand total of a 75 gas discount, 100 if you go for both upgrades, which, you know, is another medevac. Uh, so definitely, especially the armory gas cost, I think, has a big impact in how smoothly you can kind of get to that mid game, Terran. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot, those 50 gas, but usually you need it at the time when you're using every little bit of said gas on Metavax, on just the basic upgrades, on add-ons, stuff like that. Any sort of factory units, in this case, Widowmons. 
think Beyond has realized what he's up against now. That's not going to intimidate them, but if he gets caught all along the watchtower here against the storm, he's going to have a lot of trouble. Hmm. A cyclone still tanky enough to deal with this. The double drop. Beyond picks up and heads for the main. Storm is now completed. A war prism conspicuously leading the charge. Beyond, does he have enough at home to defend? That's going to be the question at the end of the day as the charge lots chase him down. That prism, it's clear what he's intending. The drop is going off at the same time, but the storms are absolutely devastating. Category 5 as Hero comes streaming into the natural, but he's going to be losing the pylon in his main. Who does that? And with it, most of his gateway production, which makes it harder to warp in so much on the other side. The boys are pulled to box out the zealots, but they won't hold forever. And now some Archons are joining up. Another beautiful storm to breach the high ground. But back at home has lost 22 probes. Beyond's double drop, still terrible, terrible damage being dealt to both sides. But Hero, I think, is actually getting the worst end of this now. As he's caught in between the barracks, he might lose his plus one weapons. He's trying to juggle his Archons and, and warp in whatever he can, but most of the gateways are depowered. Juggles the Archon out. He's locked in here with the SCVs. It's unclear who's trapped in here with who. As Hero continues to find the damage, he's killed 31 SCVs, but he's about to lose his natural. He's gonna be down to one base. It's an absolute economic disaster for Hero. He scans the main. There's nothing there. I'm not even sure what he's scanning for. Was he not sure if he killed the Nexus? Either way, making sure it's not being repowered. I guess is a priority at this stage. And Hero now has nothing left. Never base trade a Terran. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? And Beyond will take game number one in a classic fashion. Just stimming and winning as a Hero with a well put together timing. But at the end of the day, two Medivacs. Uh, the Terran, it's much easier to put together a defense when your buildings can fly and uh, your medevacs have afterburners, whereas Hero's entire attack was based off a of war prism. Once his production and, and that lifeline wa was cut, when most of the gateways got depowered and the attack started to bog down as he exhausted his storms, Hero overstaying his welcome and uh, beyond eventually kicking him out of the game. Which brings us into game two. Beyond takes one. Hero, a big commitment that does not pay off. Early probe scout. I, I don't blame him against Beyond, uh, who's notorious for his early game shenanigans. Just haven't seen it yet so far. But Hero, trying the base trade, but an odd choice. I, I don't know if he didn't have uh, recall energy or was more confident in it. But Beyond, with a... He's he's so decisive, and that's why he's able to get away with so much, and has been for his entire career. And that's why he's the most Terran Terran. He's like, no, I'm dropping. I will lose my entire army at home, but this double drop could get the damage done. And because he does it, he's so committed. He's not going back and forth. He's picking up and heading to the main. And that's the entire flight plan. Anything past that? Well, we'll make a decision then. Uh, but these spur-of-the-moment actions translate directly into victory. All right. I do think Hero had something going. If he was able to defend the drop, he clearly had the tech, and he was able to just crush Beyond's army. The storms melted him. It's just attacking up the ramp is where things um, obviously get a bit difficult. It's going to be reactor clones. Beyond going to try it out here. As yeah, those cyclones, the, the actual list of the patch notes. All right, the cyclone attacks about a little over 10% slower, uh, just in general, so that reduces the DPS. Uh, it takes a moment to be for the first attack. It used to be instant, like the moment it stopped moving or, or it chose to attack. The damage point is what it's called. And the lock-on now has about a three-second cooldown. So that means you can potentially get the lock broken, or if you kill something like a probe, for example. Just a day ago, or two, or 
however many it is now, uh, that Adept probably would have died there. But that little bit of less damage. Making the difference. And the two clones. Still have a bonus to mechanical. Um, and do have 20 more HP. The one thing... There were two things from... If you watch the, the balance patch breakdown video. Two things that were changed from that. Otherwise, we in turn took it, copy-pasted the rest. Um, which were the feedback rapid fire change. Which would allow you to just kind of wave your feedbacks over everything. Because it would feedback stuff that had energy. The reason you can't do that now is because you'll end up feedbacking the same unit. Any unit with energy, even if that unit just got feedback, can be feedbacked again. I'm saying feedback so many times, it's making my brain feel like it's full of feedback. Which is... Ooh. And you see, that's not what you want. Uh, you want to feedback other things. And that's what the rapid fire change would have allowed it to do. But uh, that didn't end up going through. Um, there were some interpretations that it would be too strong to be able to wipe out all the energy of units in an area easily and quickly. Not sure who brought those up, but also the Cyclone was going to benefit from doubly so from damage upgrades. It's kind of a trade-off for the nerf, but now it's just kind of straight up nerfed. A little more HP, but less damage and a lock-on time, I think, is overall a nerf in anything but using them as a slight meat shield. But now we have Blink. Um, the more classical response, that observer on the high ground, and, well, might take another hit or two, but the cyclone's still quite clunky when it gets boxed in by its own bio. Beyond just stimming, chasing down the stalkers, heading across. Is there anything to stop him from just, no, nope, he's just gonna keep going. Will he hit the stims again? There's one shield battery back there, but Beyond doesn't seem to care. Uh, well, he's gonna warp in. Shield battery overcharge is used. Great timing from Hero. Try not to let me untake out the shield battery or be incentivized. But 10 probes. Beyond just comes up, clocks him across the face, and now Hero slowly but surely recovering as he chases him back across the map. But Beyond, doesn't matter what sword changes. We're just gonna keep stimming Marines and Marauders and see how it goes. And so far, well, it's gone pretty well. He's building a bunker back at home. But one Bianker. Is that enough to deal with the Blink Stalkers? A conspicuous observer here that I believe Bion has indeed spotted. Hero gonna get out. Uh, there's not really enough Stalkers to uh, threaten critical damage here. And that Blink cooldown. He wants to get out a bit offset. But he ends up getting out with most of the Stalkers, and the threat is still there. And Hero, did Hero not start, or did he cancel his third? I'm not sure exactly. Either way, the end result is that Hero does not have a third, and Beyond does not know that. So Hero's been focusing entirely on getting tech, on getting those units out. He's already got a Colossus on the way. In fact, that's his second one. Extended Thermal Lance is halfway done. So Hero has focused on getting the right units to deal with the army, as opposed to uh, stretching more thinly and getting the economy and trying to catch up that way. All right. Cancels a reactor, Beyond does. But why? In order to get his armor upgrade, I guess? Not bothering? Uh, he may have either spotted a Colossus, or just decided Widow Mines are boring and sad, when you could be microing Marines, Marauders, and Medivacs for 15 years straight. Um, but, Ghost Academy on the way. I think, therefore I am, and also Beyond... Maybe misreading it. The Colossi should come as a slight surprise. The Ghost Academy, of course, good. And coming down a ramp into a concave of Marauders is never great for the Protoss. Extended Thermal Lance being done lends a lot of defensive potential. You can stay easily out of range of those bio units. Until it's finished, the Marauders only have to take a nice little stumble forward in order to hit the Colossi. Rupter. Cancelled into Observer. Both these players kind of going back and forth on, on how they want to handle the opponent's army. Vikings, Spotter Pylon, Spotter Probes. Hero Notorious for using that select all army hockey. Not surprised to see uh, the usage of things like probes instead of zealots and stuff. 
which I think is fine. Observer to the north side. Doesn't cover the exact, like... I don't know if that's an air blocker. Also very cool. There's like an ocean over there. It, wait, is that the ghost river? Ah, uh, I get it. Speaking of ghosts... Beyon now has one in production. He's up 20 supply. But... Hero has been focused more on the quality rather than the quantity of his unit composition, but that only gets you so far. At some point, you do have to have enough units to deal with the bile. How many Ruptors? One on the field. And... The untruddling through. Just two Vikings, not really enough to scare the Colossi. Four are definitely better. EMP. Shield battery overcharged, though, to counteract it. And very... Uh, oh, he's away from the ghost. Just gotta get rid of these rocks. Not gonna take too long for the stim bio. Overcharge about to run out. Looks like no disruptor shots ready. Marauder's moving forward, trying to eat the hits from the Colossi. Another Ruptor coming up into the fray. And finds a decent connection. Lands it on a bunch of Marauders here. The probes are forced to be pulled off the line. More Vikings coming up, but able to chunk up those Marauders. Ideally, probes are not the ones in front. Charge Lab's doing a much better job. But Hero, again, is able to pull the probes and turn the back. So he holds and loses all of the Robo Bay units. But still, a hold. Hero, by the skin of his non-existent Protoss teeth. He's able to keep it together. Beyond drops the mules. Uh, I, I'm holding on to the energy there. That's a nice way to put it. Still, no matter... If you could make the armory free and be, and be like, it's not worth what a CV building. Beyond, you have 675 gas. No! I hate upgrades. All right, real, real Terrans don't need upgrades. All right, they just need stim pack a bunch of times. A DT coming in. Plus two ground weapons. There's no turrets anywhere here. A scan. Yep, that's a DT. Did he get one into the natural? I think maybe a bit of a misplay from Hero. Only sending one DT, kind of giving away the whole thing there. If he had sent one into the natural and the main simultaneously, he, he there was nothing there to stop him. But now, Vion's looking for it. And another DT picked off. Second robo for Hero. Beyon. Still no armory. Alright. The armory is the raven of TVP. Terrans might build a raven, but building an armory? Psh, for cowards who want to play late game. 12 minutes in, Beyond. And... It is. I, I would consider it at this point a mistake to not have an armory, to not even be bothering. There we are. There's the Whittle Mine. Fires across, finishes the command center, and dives away at the last moment. And he's gonna build it out in front here. Armory and Engineering Bay, because of course he is. Beyond so focused on having that army supply. And you know what? He has a ton of it. But Hero is working on plus three weapons. There's uh, just one disruptor in the mix there. Fires it off. Almost hit something. Was very close to being scary then. So, classic disruptor value. Another ruptor, but this one finds a chunk. And that's Beyond's argument against upgrades. There's no upgrades will save you from that. Technically correct. Two two starts. But Beyond, again, took one across the nose and is forced back. He's got a fourth base. This is the smallest map we've had in a while. The least amount of bases. Only 12 bases total. Um, which is just... It's cramped, to say the least, as the late game goes on. We're starting to get a lot closer to cutting it in half here. The Ruptors. Beyond now adding siege tanks in. The amount of charge lots is so damn high. Disruptor fired across the bow. Unlucky Marauder catches it. Another Ruptor, another unlucky Marauder and Marine. The Vikings over the top though, Guardian Shield not enough, EMP helpful, 
Those gateways are kind of... I'm not sure who they're helping more. But Hero has set up his gateways in quite a choke point. Beyond just holding the middle here. Hero, seven, going on nine gates. He's got two Robos. Beyond, only five barracks for now. He's adding three more, though. Going up towards eight. His tank's getting closer and closer. Both players maxed out. Beyond still, only on one one upgrades, but just melting through the northern side, which includes two Colossi and a Ruptor. Falls back. Disruptors forced to fire off. Beyond easily splits and stims, dodges away, and crushes the army. And Hero came in a little late from the southern flank. And now, while well, Beyond's chasing these stalkers away, a desperate recall. He will escape with most of them, but now Beyond has double the army supply. A disruptor shot, Beyond eating a couple. Another Ruptor at the front. Hero's able to warp in a whole bunch of charge lots. He has the upgrades here. He has to dodge his own Disruptor, which is um, not optimal. Another shot. Clips just one, but Vikings on deck. Another Ruptor. Ooh, that one got a good chunk. Picks up the Vikings yet again. Continues to Chrono Boost out. Beyond about to finish up 2 too. The reason that Hero has been able to fight at all has been this upgrade advantage. But yeah, I'm not convinced of that gateway funnel here. It truly feels like he, he set up a concave for the turret. And he's funneling his charge lots through it. Depowers it. That pylon, though, did bait two ghosts into a Ruptor hit. Two DTs underneath. Easily scanned out. Another Ruptor. Vikings on deck. Switch the difference. Two more Ruptors coming up. Not a single Liberator. Beyond still, just looking to drive the point home. He's carving through these gateways, which may actually open up more opportunity uh, for, for Hero to actually attack in. Kiting back these charge lots. Three disruptors on the high ground. A second starport on the way for Beyond. As Baby will, will admit that Liberators are a good, good skill toy have. But the disruptor count is so damn high. And now that he's whittled down the Vikings... He's going right back into Colossi. Dodges another hit. Another Disruptor taken out. The amount of shots, though, is so damn high. Another couple Marauders as Beyond forces the issue. We're just dancing around the problem here. But is Beyond actually making progress? In terms of units lost, Hero has lost a couple thousand more minerals, a thousand more gas. But he's now on five, going on six bases. Beyond still on four. Tries to eat a Whittle Mine hit. Uh, <laughs> with a probe, but then just shoots it with the disruptor anyways. Finds another base. I'm not sure if Beyond even knows this base could have been here. He just wanders into it. It was pretty much free at any point. Hero's been mining from it for a while, but now Beyond heads to the north. More gateways will be taken out. Hero keeps, he refuses to build them in his vein. He'd rather just build them out in the front. Meanwhile, disruptor slams into the center mass. The tank is taken out. And the Stalkers are chasing Beyond across the map, partially because much of his army supply is committed to the southern side. EMP, point-blank range. Are there enough reinforcements to deal with this? It's too late to recall. He loses the Nexus. And now we're going into a base train? Well, some Zealots going to be hit by the Disruptors, but a lot of SCVs as well. Beyond doesn't have that much at home to defend. We're going into a half-hearted base train. Well, I... Uh, huh. The three Colossi, Hero's entire army. Hero's giving up his entire economy. Beyond is on the high ground. We're base trading a turret again. This keeps happening. I think Hero has a lot more going for him this time. But at the same time, is this necessary? <laughs> All right. Well, Beyond still has enough army supply. His production is being camped. Possibly the most important part. Beyond is going to kill another Nexus. DT's being warped in. Plus three weapons about to complete, but a full, near full energy orbital taken out. And the DT's may be the defining characteristic here. Beyond needs to go find the Dark Shroud at this point. What is back at home? Another DT. He still has one orbital. He just dropped mules. Beyond... And a recall comes through. 
Um, Fiona's trying to re-land in his main, but there's still a bunch of zealots there. It feels like this game had- oh my god. Both players have successfully avoided one another. The social anxiety of Terran versus Protoss is unmatched. He relands some of his production, which then proceeds to promptly die to probes and zealots. But Viking, there's no stalkers! Oh my god! The Vikings, why are they even here? Meanwhile, the bio army getting chased down. The boys have to be pulled almost out of energy here. The probes are involved. And beyond taps out. Well, I mean, yeah, it was bad. Was it over? Well, there's six disruptors. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give him the benefit of some doubt there. And there's a lot of doubt to go around. But Hero takes it. Was it easy? Was it Um Hero takes it. Wow. Quite a back and forth and all around uh from these two. Beyond with his dogged refusal to build upgrades or armories or liberators. Hero pretending like marines and marauders are zerglings and walling off his own units against them. But at the end of the day, Hero goes into another base trade against Terran, but this time around, he's able to come out on top. So we're all tied up going into game three, Ocean Bowl. Too much stress. One Rex expand, but on the high ground from beyond. I never know. It's a, it's quite a, like, how do you commentate disruptors? Okay, it's like, uh, baby. Because uh, sometimes the difference between winning the game and doing nothing is about a quarter second. So. Well, nope. Yeah, come on in. All right. No shields allowed. Does he recall it? Do it. Too late. Oh my god. There it goes. A depth scout. Scouting Hellion on the way as well. A depth just gonna hang out. Hey guys, what are you up to? Hmm. Well, Hellion takes a lot of damage. Going to have to be repaired before it gets sent anywhere, which buys a little bit more time for a hero to uh, build up to blink and be cut. Well, he did a Reaper wall. And he has his tech here as well, but there was no Reaper beyond with the classic counter. It's like Beyond gonna do a Hellion drop. Which, if Hero had sentries, those sentries would take less damage and less likely to be killed by the Hellions, which have bonus damage to light. But um, Hero is going blink, so it's unlikely he'll have more than like one sentry by the time this shows up. Three Hellions and seven Marines loaded into the medevac. Beyond breaking out all the builds from like 2012. There is a wall off and a shield battery, but the shield battery doesn't protect the probes. The observer spots the medevac, but then the Marines pop out and now the door is open and the Hellions come in. Oh no, they just waltz right in. And there's no such thing as a door. And now, pretty soon, there's going to be no such thing as probes. Oh my god. They'll expect some of us in the wreckage from us. And, and Beyond's like, great job. All right. You've earned your bonus. Takes the Hellions home. And then, of course, darts back in. He has to know that Observer's there, right? Like, Hero is baiting with Blink. Wow, he didn't. Big mistake out of Beyond. Somehow gets two Hellions out, but... Hero baits with the blank. 
He holds on to it, stays per in intentionally away from the edge, and then blinks it and gets the medevac. So, pretty big win there to make up for an inordinate amount of damage from those early units. And now the bunker! Oh my god. Just needed to accept the terms and conditions, which is always more and more stressful nowadays. Mm. Barracks. Second barracks, but now hero all over the main. There's only one siege tank. And it's not in position to protect this. Without the medevac and without all those units that Beyun ended up losing, this blink pressure is going to be very difficult to defend cost effectively. It's likely he'll be able to stop it at some point. But where does the bleeding end is the question. He loses a refinery. Not the end of the world. The war prism being used for vision. A third siege tank. The stalkers, well, guess where the tanks aren't? <laughs> it, it makes sense, but also, oh, but a Liberator. Gonna get some counter damage here. Ends up with four probes, five. A lot of lost mining time. But as long as Hero is able, oh, that was a bit sloppy out of the end. Move with the Liberator. But as long as Hero is able to keep the Warp Prism alive, that's by far the most important. And, uh, possibly the biggest sticking point when it comes to Hero, but third base is on the way. He got the job done. Losing probes to a Liberator definitely hurt any sort of momentum he was creating. But you gotta look at the, uh, the fact he has this many stalkers on the field. He kept the Warp Prism alive. He has a third base over halfway done and charge on the way. Which means Beyond is in a very awkward position where if he moves out, uh, well, if he goes, it's going to be trouble. But if he stays, that trouble could be nearly twice as much. So. If you just let them have a third. And you let them tech up. Then by the time you move out, there's going to be no right answers. So I expect Beyond to be moving out with Stim and plus one finishing. And he should have Metavax. Where's, where's the Metavax? Yeah. Oh, he's a five block. Oh no, at 86 out of 86. Very awkward timing. As clearly, he wants to be building medevacs right now, but Hero did pick off a couple depots there, which undercuts all of the- Oh yeah, the observers are larger now, because of course they are. Eventually the observer will just cover the entire map. It'll just be a shimmer that goes over you. Um, they got another 10% size buff. I've seen this you know, I, I'm okay. Uh, it's one, so it's easier to spot them. But also a little easier for you to spot if you have observers with your own army. You might be like, well, that's just for Potato League players. I did mention Protoss, didn't I? Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. <laughs> Plus one done for Hero. Stim now, completed for Beyond. Does he pull the... No, he don't pull the boys here. He's got a third base on the way. He's filling in the rest of the upgrades. It's a bit of an awkward spot. One with Amon taken out. Almost gets a medevac. Cross him a stalker, though. This is definitely a potent timing. On to Beyond. He has plenty of army supplies. got combat shield. The upgrades... Uh, there's a lot of sentries mixed in here for Hero. More Prism headed out. Fourth base and a dark shrine on the way. How many gates done? Seven. Adding two more. Next those. Oh. More little mines. Wow, he just goes. And Hero looking the other way loses a stalker. Might lose two. Beyond with a vengeance. The rest of the army is trying to chase this down, but... Those two marines just moving their little legs along. Oh, but now turned again, loses two medevacs, which definitely... Uh, and the force fields, moderately inconvenienced, mostly Protoss units, as is customary. And the tanks are sieged, but Hero doesn't care. He's just slamming into the Colossi. Once again, I'm not convinced on those force fields. 
as loses the Colossi. Force field. You know what? I think it would be a buff if we removed Force Field at this point. Or, like, the Force Field ability only turns on if your opponent is Zerg. Maybe Protoss. Though, that one's arguable, too. But, like, like just a you know, pre-EMP. Because I can't remember the last time I've seen... Like, for every Force Field that seems useful, there's five of them that seem to wall off your own Zealots. And even if you do catch units, they usually just pick up into the medevacs and slide away. So, it's a false sense of security, those force fields, considering your advanced warriors are melee range units. So, the, the amount of scenarios where you're able to cut down that sort of battlefield is not... There are thin margins, though. But the most important thing right now... Beyond... Actually, technically doesn't know if Hero has a third. I think he's assuming that one. But he doesn't know about the fourth either. So, if he scans this... And at this point, it looks like a scan is the only way. Like, look at Hero's vision at the moment. He knows the map is dark and full of Terran. So, uh, lighting it up however he can, especially with those new one vision range longer pylons and slightly faster build time observers you can see marginally more and if beyond is assuming this is like at least just now taking a fourth but hero has been comfortably on a fourth base for a while beyond is going essentially full turtle mode and hero may oblige it by attacking it again a spy lot out here a bio armor. hello Pops the Guardian Shield. The Peacock Feathers. I'm like, let's go! Let's go, come out! You want to take this outside? No. Of course not. Why would I go outside? <clears throat> but the Guardian Shield before a fight. Now we got plus one air on the way, hero. He's got, like, he's adding more and more power. He's just waiting. Come to me. And I think that's the right call. Beyond has three bases. You will run out of money. In fact, the main is mining out. The natural isn't going to be too far behind. Hero has five bases. He's got 83 probes. He's going for Stargate. He's building interrupters like... Come and get me. Another Ruptor. Yep. Beyond moving out with a few units. He's gonna try to take his fourth, which there's a pylon. There's he's got a line of, of spylons here. Beyond is maxed out. And that is a dangerous terrain army. 2-2 two, two versus 3-1. Widow mine. Connects. The concave. Disruptor. Marauder. Hero just filling in. Only nine gates. It sounds good, but not enough to, like, refill his entire army. Little Mines hit. And Beyond looking for the massive concave, but the fadeaway shots are huge! Massive connections! Beyond does not get out of the way. And he's kind of forced into this base. He, he needs to get another base. He's going to run out of options here, and Hero is just starving him. He's waiting for him to come down the ramp. Into the Ruptors, into the Colossi Disruptors while retreating. The Martyrdom perk is strong. Leo just continues expanding. The Viking count is damn high, but the Disruptors turn the corner, find a shot. More ghosts, though, from the south side. And Beyond finds a decent fight here. Gets a Warp Prism, gets another Colossus. Uh, one Medivac just loaded up with units there. I think that's an accident. Indeed it is. But not a decisive victory. For beyond a strong win that will allow him to get another base but now the carriers are in production as well as a mothership he's going up to five stargates we got stargate command over here plus one shields added on beyond he's got a bianker down but looking Far from beyond breakable at the moment.
The bio army continues rolling around. No gateway units can challenge it. A few zealots. Oh, I get a ghost. More zealots made it in. Oh, wait. Well, kind of split off. It's a ghost. Get some tanks. Hero just sending in zealots, sacrificing their lives for time. In order to get those carriers out. He's building five in a mothership, so... Hero's just grinding him down. Beyond does have another base now, and Hero doesn't have a ton of money in the bank. Carriers are not a poor man's unit. You gotta pay per interceptor. And they have a tendency to be gunned down quite quick. Oh my god, what a base that is. Oh my. Five carriers at a time. Beyond has more marauders than marines. 32 marauders, 19 marines, 9 ghosts. And the carriers will finally be revealed. Uh, attack the disruptor shots, find some ghosts. But the bio army is moving in towards one of the northern bases. Looks like Hero. Hero. Don't. Not again. Don't do it again. Hero, just, just fight. I don't know if that's actually a good idea, but like... It looks like he's just saying, we're gonna base trade, whatever. But now he's coming back to defend EMP. But he recalls out. The entire highly advanced Protoss army is here. The carriers are swarming for the interceptors to be pedantic. Air weapons level 2 about to complete. 3-3 done on the ground for beyond. He's building marines and medevacs. Because what else would you expect? You get enough of them, you can solve any problem. Eight carriers is a big one, though. Eight carriers with plus two uh, attack and plus one shields. The attack upgrade's a big deal for the carriers, as the interceptors have relatively low damage. They attack quickly, though. Is that a mothership recall? What a play. And disruptor shot underneath, dodged out. The bio ball. Are there more ruptors? There's another shot. That one gets a connection. But I assume there are colossi. The force fields and a time warp. Yeah, 21 SCV is dead. And Hero just stiff arming Beyond away. Beyond? Barely restrained here. Mass Stalker. There are two Colossi and three Disruptors. Very hard to see. Well, there's two of them. Not that hard to see because they're off to the side here for some reason. Active cloaking, but scan exists. Is there enough to... There's just not enough anti-air. If you look very closely, you don't see anything, but you see two Gs, because Hero clearly winning that fight. Not remotely enough anti-air. A decisive victory there in game three. Hero turns it around. Beyond tries a few old builds, but this time around, Hero with the classic blink, and he, he kept... I, I gotta commend Hero. He clearly... Like, there was a few moments when it looked like he was gonna just keep attacking. Then he's like, you know what? No. And at the end of the day, that was enough. He kept himself back, built the right army, and takes it home two to one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Hope it made your day a little bit better. Uh, and if you got the means and motivation, be awesome to check out Patreon. Uh, but I hear liking and subscribing. It's free for now. And if you haven't yet checked out the second channel for more content, streams, everything, just more. Uh, Winter Gaming TV in the description, of course. Right, Jimmy? Right? I, <clears throat> as well as if you want to check out my video on the new patch notes, um, then uh, you can find that there. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Hopefully it made your day a little bit better. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.